before, and I'm going to be really, really specific and say externals before asymmetrical neutrals, okay? Because this does not mean all neutrals, like Tadasana, okay? So I'm going to put externals before asymmetrical neutrals. Okay. Okay, good. So we're really focusing this unscramble on these things, okay? So let's determine what the first and the last pose is. First pose is? What's the last pose that you put? Okay, wait. How many of you put partial Raise your hand. Raise your hand high. You are correct. How many of you put Virgin one? Okay. You're in a close second. Okay. All right. Why do you think partial tenosina would be the last pose in this in those in the what you have there? First of all, how many poses are there? Nine. 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 Okay. Okay. Yes. Yeah. 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 I'm going to say partial tenosina is the hardest. Yeah. And the only reason that I'm going to say that it's the, it's harder is because of the position of the arm. Okay, and also just the tightness of the hamstring. Parshvo tanasana. So what is parshvo tanasana? Parshvo tanasana. Parshvo means side, right? So and the arms are in reverse namaste, and you are bending forward. So I'm going to say that's harder than your one. There's more going on. Would you agree? I mean, I think that they're in equal, they're in equal diff level of difficulty. Okay? How many of you, because when I look at most of you in part, not most of you, when I look at all of you in partial tenosana, none of you are able to get your hands together in that position and your shoulders back. A little bit, maybe, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Listen, I, I can do it. <laughs> um, but most of you, that's really difficult. So because of that added element, that's a harder than your adrosana. Not just what's going on with the legs and the forehead. Okay, so we're going to put partial tenosana as the last one. Okay? And let's fill in the blanks. Okay, what did you put as the second one? Oh, okay. Is that a symmetrical neutral or is that asymmetrical? Okay, so we're saying that's okay, right? To go before the externals, okay? For now, we're saying that's okay, all right? Even though that's not an easy pose, okay? It's not that difficult for most people, okay? What'd you put as number three? With Okay. I would say either or would be fine if you put Utkatasana or Virabhadrasana to two together. Okay, it's fine. Let's put um, let's put Utkatasana. Because is that a um, is that an asymmetrical neutral or a symmetrical? Symmetrical. So for now we're saying this is okay because a lot of times you'll see these three poses like done, and this is also you have to remember this is not the beginning of the class. This is not the beginning of the class. This is just like in your standing pose section, unscrambling these poses, okay? It's not the beginning of your class. So we're, we're taking that into consideration as well, okay? Then let's put your Vajrasana 2, you said? Yeah. Okay, good. What did you put next? Did anybody put triangle pose next? Yes. Yes. Okay, that's fine. There's no right or wrong. Sometimes, like, um, Carlene and I were having this discussion the other day, too, is that when you're linking these external poses, right, you know, first of all, Virabhadrasana 2 and Uttita Parshva Kanasana are both bent-legged externally rotating poses. So sometimes it's nice to do a bent-legged, then a straight-legged, then a bent-legged. Do you know what I mean? Because you give the body a little bit of a break. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You don't have to do it that way. Like, let's say you really wanted to work people's quads. Do you know what I mean? You really want to like work that part of the body and really pick it up, then maybe you put those two together. But again, it really sort of depends on what you're doing. But sometimes I'll do that. I'll do bend, straight bend, and just kind of vary it up. Just know that that's going to be uh, class two, level two, two, three. You're not going to put like three poses like that and keep your class. Right. 
Yes. Okay. So then Trikonasana, right? I need new markers. I don't know if we have any. Those are, these are all like really dull. Okay, so we only have one more. What's the last, what's the next one? The yeah, other one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, two more, two more, sorry. Yeah. And then you have to press read Okay. Cool. Is press read a symmetrical or asymmetrical neutral? So, okay, so we have a lot of symmetrical neutrals in this unscramble, don't we? Mm -hmm. We have Tadasana, Uttanasana, Utkatasana, and Prasvita Padasanasana. We only have two asymmetrical neutrals. So those two asymmetrical neutrals are way down at the bottom of the list here. Could you put Prasvita Padasanasana somewhere like up here? Yeah, totally. Okay, but it's okay that you're putting it here. So, oh, this isn't good. Okay. Yes, you can. Yes, you can, and that's what I was going to say. You could have put like prostrated pasanasana here, and then you know trikonasana like here, for example. So a lot of times, what we'll do, and this is really again, this is a lot of times just about giving the body a little bit of a break. So it's like you're doing external, 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 external. Sometimes it's nice to do external. So you do warrior two side angle pose. Go well, around to the other side. Where are you two setting pose? Now, give the body a break from that. Press read of Padishtanasana. Come back up. Do Trikonasana. Do you know what I'm saying? So, like, part of it is just sort of giving the body a break from doing one range of motion too much in a period of time. That's all. You can do it. Either way, you can do it. Okay? All right, everybody okay with that? Yeah. You good? Okay, good. All right, so here's what I'd like to do now is clear the room a little bit of the, you're going to need one block and one block and a belt and just clear the blankets out for now and get your mats. And you um, keep your, uh, I don't know if we're going to be able to get to this much of this. Usually it depends on the teacher, but a lot of teachers, it's oftentimes the transition, the jumping, or the stepping back or stepping forward is usually happening on the retention of the breath. It's not actually. So in other words, you've completed the exhale, and there's a retention of the breath as the foot is stepping up, and then you inhale to warrior four. Does so everybody got that? It's the same thing as jumping, right? So you inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, and then on the retention of the breath, you're jumping, and then you're in Chaturanga for the full exhale. You're there, exhaling and exhaling. Okay, it's often taught that way, but sometimes teachers will also teach it at the finishing of the breath. So in other words, you're in downward facing dog, at the end of the exhalation, you're starting to bring the leg forward, and then you inhale to warrior one. At the end of your exhalation, you jump your feet forward to your hands, and then you inhale Ardha Uttanasana, exhale Uttanasana. Does that make sense? So there's a couple of different ways you can do it. Um, all right, so you... So you know with that, yes. I have a question about the um, jumping up from Gara Dog. Um, I always am on my fingertips. Do you need to be flat on the hands for the jump from down dog up to your hands? Yes. You should be flat. Yeah, not on the okay. fingertips. I'm always, yeah, I tend to. Yeah, even if you can't get all the way up to your hands for today, keep your hands flat because it's just not good. Okay. You know, to, yeah. And so then you're still using that quarter cut, get that height as opposed yeah. to using the fingertips. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, good question. Um, and then we were starting to just go into the groups and talk about different ways to teach going into Vira Vajrasana 1. Everybody's got that. So you can teach it from down dog or you can teach it from standing part. It just depends on the level of the class. Okay? Um, and if you're teaching it from standing, you can teach it from Tadasana, stepping the leg back. But that's hard because you can't see how long the distance is. So sometimes it might be helpful to teach it from here. And then you turn the leg out, and then you actually have to pick this back leg up and turn yourself to face forward. And now, you know, heel to heel are a little bit wider. So depending on the level of the class and all of that will determine a lot of times how you teach going into these poses. If you're teaching more of a flow style vinyasa class, most likely you're going to be teaching all these standing poses from down dog, coming from down dog, stepping up. Okay? All right? Can I say something? Yes. So start to watch how you view body language when you're teaching. So this is not the way. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine uh, Jody uh, asks you to do Surya 
surprised to hear D and on Chaturanga, you're looking at her and she's like, Chaturanga, no matter. <laughs> Thank you. 